Hey, how's everybody doing today? I forgot to add this into my last video. Today I'm just going to be doing kind of a walkthrough of my experience with the Wing Wing and Thrustmaster F-16 throttle setup. So I hope you enjoy what I have to say. This isn't a tutorial or really even an unboxing. It's just a kind of an overview of my experience over the last year with both products. I'd like to give a shout out Fox 3 Managed Solution for being my primary sponsor. Always there. Greatly appreciate it. And let's move on with this video. I was just sitting down getting ready to jump into DCS and I was thinking about doing some training missions with the F-16. And I figured I'd do a quick rundown on the wind wing and the Thrustmaster F-16 throttle base and grip. I had bought this probably over a year ago, even better, maybe a year and a half ago. And I bought this a couple of months ago. I ended up picking it up in two pieces. I bought this later on because I didn't want to spend a ton of money on. I thought 500 and something dollars for the whole setup was honestly ridiculous. So I ended up waiting and getting the throttle section from eBay and I finally ran across something on eBay where I got this for a lot less than uh, what it was advertised at. So over to the wind wing. When I picked up the wind wing, this back piece right here, the throttle guide, it was basically a nice big chunk of aluminum. I don't know if it's because they saved on money or whatever they did, but they ended up going over to a plastic backing, which I have no problem with whatsoever. I, I think it was a good idea. It basically, it, it did lighten it up and it gives it a much smoother feeling when you're moving the stick back and forth. Actually, way smoother. The other one was a little rough and I imagine that could have wore. So I didn't really get into flying the F-16 too much. I just found it a really difficult plane to land, I was having a lot of problems when I first jumped in. I kind of think I jumped in over my head and I ended up sticking with the 18. So I boxed it. Probably almost a year later, I ended up picking this up. Started flying the F-16, absolutely fell in love with the plane. As far as build quality, for what Thrustmaster is asking for this setup, they're asking way too much money. I mean, it, it, it's nice. Things that I didn't like about it is I just think it's cheaply made. A lot of plastic. This right here is not too bad as far as the way it's made, but as far as like for friction, the, the method that they use for friction, it's terrible. It, it just doesn't work as well as the wing wing does. As far as using the landing gear, it's a little kind of plasticky and stuff. And there's, the button layout isn't bad. This chaff flare, emergency chaff flare, slap button, that was probably one of my favorite parts. I wish there was something like that on the wind wing one. But other than, you know, as far as the throttle itself, the friction thing, that, that really, they need to fix that. That's just that little screw. It doesn't hold up. If you over tighten it, it just ruins it. And it, it's almost impossible to get it fixed. They don't sell extra parts for it. Like I said, once again, this is kind of cheesy. The button layout isn't bad. You know, it comes in handy. Most of the stuff that you're going to be using in the F-16 because of the way it's designed with the, with the um, dogfight method that it uses, most people just, you know, click the button and they go over to what they're going to go over to unless they're doing, you know, AG missions, you know, air to ground missions. So what I did like about it is the handle design I thought was really good. This button right here, right off the bat when I got it, it started giving me problems. And I have a friend that's got one, same thing. What it does is, okay, this is where, this is the center spot. So you can turn it all the way to the left, obviously. Oh, that would be right, left, well, whatever direction you're looking from. And over here. So if you go all the way over, and you just turn it, it just slides. I don't know if it needs to be pulled off and glued, but see how it comes out of alignment? So that was a problem right from the get-go. This is something that I think would have been a nice addition to replace this button with the wind wing. I do like this one better, although this one gives you more options on the wind wing. This design, from what my understanding, what I've been reading on, is a block 60 or up version. I'm not sure if there's anything above the 60 of the F-16. So that's what it is. Basically, it is what it is. The positioning of this handle is more comfortable than the position of the wind wing. And what I'm trying to say is as far as build quality, they're both, I mean, basically they're equal. They're almost identical. But you can see the angle this is on versus the angle that the wind wing is on. The wind wing is, is too up and down. To get it in the position that the thrustmaster is on, you'd have to move it all the way over to almost full mill, about an inch and a half away from full, full mill. Then you're looking at a more comfortable position. So once you're up in the air and you're cruising, you're either there, full mill, or an afterburner. Nobody really you know, sits around and idle when you're up in the air. As far as, just to jump way back to the beginning, Yes, I did have the aluminum one when I did my first video on this. I ended up selling that one 
to replace it with this because I wanted to try it and I'm very happy with it. So we'll just leave that as it basically the same thing, lighter and it feels smoother to me. It's got a nice smooth underbottom to it. But the positioning of it is definitely a far cry from the Thrustmaster. The Thrustmaster is pretty much spot on. As you can see, the angles here are probably almost identical now. As far as all the other buttons, they're pretty similar. A little bit different shape. This one has a little bit more of a tip to it. The slew button looks almost identical. This one has some better, the Thrustmaster has some, some higher corners to the, to the button. Makes it a little easier to hold. But all in all, so they're, 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 we're talking basically the same thing. The blackout button on the Thrustmaster is more like a little trigger over there. And on the wind wing, it's got a couple buttons underneath. Now, with DCS, wind wing, and Thrustmaster, you're never going to get anything unless you build your own control panel on the left-hand side where your throttle sits, where all the buttons are placed in the right spot. So some of these, like, this is pretty much irrelevant. You can assign that to whatever you need. And there's some other buttons and switches on here that you're hardly ever going to use. As far as, like... The altitude hold, the other button next to it, those are the same over on the wind wing. The wing wing definitely has more, more handles for moving things back and forth if you want to use a zoom or uh, zoom in or, you know, if you're into VR and you want to assign it to another type thing. I do all VR now, so I've been messing around. You got to go into the UI settings to get some of the movements. If you want to do zoom, you want to get your seat up and down, and you will need to do that in VR most of the time. Kind of once you get that headset on it kind of puts you into a different world so yeah so wind wing i don't know what the deal is but i wish they would have made an adjust more a more of an adjustable setup for how the handle is angled it's not as comfortable as this with with the thrust master when you put your hands down it's spot on with this one you're a little bit kind of have to bend your wrist a bit i'm going to look at it a little more and see if there is another way of adjusting it um if I'm lucky, maybe I can think of something, but I don't think so because of the way the holes are lined up. So back to build quality. The control panel is, is decent. It's plastic and metal. Build quality of the wind wing is very good. It's just the same as the 18. It's very heavy duty. Everything on it is, is solid. What ended up happening is I ended up adding this on and I used it. Oh, if you hear any cracking, that's my knees breaking. I ended up using it for a while. And then one day when I was flying, I went into idle and then I went back to full mill and for some reason it just jumped all the way into afterburner and it continued to do that. So I ended up deleting the app, resetting everything, updating the firmware and I don't know what happened, but after that, as soon as you move it this far, it goes into afterburner. It, it, there's nothing I could do. I tried inverting it in the settings. I tried changing everything. Something in it broke. As far as this part goes, the control panel itself, it still works fine. There's absolutely no problem with that. It's just as soon as I move the throttle up a little bit, forget it. It's just, it just jumps into afterburner. It's crazy. I've been debating on, you know, my biggest problem with it is what can I do with it? Really nothing because I don't have a warranty on it. I bought this part on eBay, so, and it's been a while, so I'm sure, you know, it's not warranted at this point. Okay, I had to jump away for a minute. So positioning of how the throttle is, it's definitely wind wing. I, I, honestly, I don't know what it's like in the actual plane. I would think it was more leveled off than this one. I think if there's a better way. I, sh I should have, uh, I know it's kind of hard on the seat like this, but it was kind of, like I said, I didn't set up the table or nothing. I don't know if you can see the difference in the angle. They, you can. I mean, you can see how this knob points down versus this one's more and these are both in idle so that's the only real issue that i have with with the wind wing one is the position of how they um their placement you know as far as positioning goes as far as button layout it's a flight simulator and you're gonna have to assign buttons to whatever suits you and that's just all even even with this one it's not an identical thing so i mean this thing's on here that actually aren't even, you know, that's not even used in the Block 60. Uh, I'm sorry, the Block 50. You know, I think it may be, I think this button right here, this this knob, I don't even think that's in the, um, I think this belongs to like the old Block 30 style maybe. You know, some things like that. All in all, I do like the positioning of this better. Using, using friction with this is kind of like, it, it just doesn't work out like, I tried even adding a bigger roller baron on it. With the wind wing one, you can, 
make it as loose and as tight as you want. I've got mine so right about here it just starts to drop slowly. There we go. Very slow. So when you're in the air, you don't have to worry about. With this one, I always had to keep, and I tried doing everything I could with, with the back piece on here where you do the, um, you tighten the, the little Allen key for, for friction. Just, it just couldn't, it was it, kind of tough. They could have came up with a much better idea than what they put in there. My opinion, it, I think it sucks, that idea. But it is a good tool when it worked a good product when it did work. Now, I don't know what to do with it other than I'm probably just gonna pull this off and sell it. Maybe I'll put that on eBay for parts. I, I don't know, it kind of kind of a bummer, but you win some and lose some. I'm back to the wind wing. I'm gonna stay back with the wind wing because at this point, since day one that I've purchased the wind wing product, I have never had a problem with any of it. Not a problem with any of it. That's literally <laughs> ever. The design with the I'm wondering if I can even use this, but it's probably programmed into it. But this, this was a nice, a really nice idea, putting the, the, um, the chaff flare button on there. That was really an awesome idea, as well as your stores. Now, as far as all that goes, for landing gear and throttle, I have a PTO2, and I've seen even on eBay, I've seen PTO1s and 2s. I don't know what on eBay. I, I hate to keep advertising, like, or giving any free advertisement to eBay, because, like, I'm seeing, like, wing wing products and stuff that are like triple the price on there. I don't know what people are thinking. They're kind of like out of their minds or something because I'm not going to buy a $200 product from eBay for $500 or $600 when I can go buy it right from the factory for the original price. One quarter of the, of the price of what you So I don't know what these people are thinking. I don't even think they're actually in the U.S., but I don't know. Maybe it's in a different currency or something, but I ain't paying like $600 just for, for a control panel when I can get it for $200 if I wanted to actually go buy it from the company. So anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up because this is really, like I said, a spirit of the moment type video. I just wanted to kind of give um, a rundown on where I am with, you know, some of my products and, and how things are going. Oh, this is actually a really good idea. Watch, let me show you something to finish this video off. Okay, so here you can see the positioning of the UHF button that you would use to, I don't know, in DCS I use it to basically open up the window for loading weapons onto my pylons and stuff. It's for rearming. Or you can also use it to go to different channels, select the channels, and you know, you all know what that's all about if you have one of these. But you can see the angle this is on, it's full back. Now that's idle. That's idle. This one is like on probably a 30 degree. This one's on a 45 degree. Now if I could turn this, if there was a way of adjusting this so I could move it over. And I'm going to look at it. Honestly, I don't think so. It's a shot in the dark. But it would be nice to be able to get it like the Thrustmaster design. That I do favor. Your hand lays on it. It's a nice straight motion. The wrist shouldn't be bent like this. The wrist should be straight. This, in any plane or any game, will start to get kind of uncomfortable after a while. This won't. That's what the problem is with this. So I'm not sure if it's something I did or it's something that can be corrected, but I am going to look at it. Again, as far as mounting, all I did, put an aluminum plate. With this one, I just decided to use double tape because I use a little, I use a little screwdriver to pry it up to break the magnets free. I put some good heavy-duty double-sided tape on here, and I haven't had an issue with it at all. I put the plate on. I have my magnets attached to it, and it's golden. Works beauty. Overall build quality of the Wind Wing, I think, in my opinion, far exceeds the Thrustmaster, and you're getting it for a couple hundred dollars less, almost a couple hundred dollars less. I will always go with the Wind Wing first. I enjoyed the Thrustmaster one. I'm not, it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad product. I think if they lowered the price by around $150, $200, it would, be a, it would make it a much more you know, a, a much better buy, well worth it. As far as design of the handles, it's, they're not too far, you know, not too different. I mean, you can tell that each company's got their own way of designing the build. I like the um, texture of the wind wing better than the texture is kind of really smooth on the Thrustmaster, just a preference, nothing that's important actually. And that's about it. Anyways, we're going to wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's just a basically a little walkthrough, nothing like, no, no guide here, nothing of great importance, just kind of my opinion on things. 
and um, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.